AS pack sample and as you can see from the segments it's definitely packed with AS pack as we saw with the VM protect so looking at the start function there is only one function recognized by IDA so what it does is it calls this address here which points to here it then pops EBP off the stack increments it by one pushes it and then returns now as I've said before the return instruction will always return to the address at the top of the stack and in this case it will be EBP so what I gather from this is EBP will probably be the address of somewhere in this function here or this this location and it will be incremented by one and once the return calls it will execute whatever is in EBP so if we actually press space we can see there's a lot of data here that doesn't seem to have been recognized by IDA so what we can do is because you know I assume that if it's incrementing EBP here it will probably execute this section of code here even though it's not recognized so we push C it will pretty much convert it all to code so I assume it's going to return to this address here and that ends up calling this function here which ends up calling all of this data here and then eventually jumping to EAX so I've already got it open in x 2 debug as you can see we're at the entry point here and it will call let's just jump back to either it will call the location so by stepping in we are taken to this pop EBP so it'll pop the base pointer of the stack and by doing so the base pointer is set to the address of the entry point it looks like let's follow in the disassembler doesn't seem to be the entry point but it seems to be in the entry point anyway and it increments it by one and then it will push it to the stack and as you can see it's down here so if we follow the return it will take us to this jump here and it will take us to this call so by opening up in IDA we can go to this call here to it will be 68A014 and looking at the XA2 debug window 68A014 so by stepping in we're now in this section we can put a breakpoint on the jump to EAX and let's run and now we hit the jump to EAX which just takes us down to here and from looking at it we can assume that this is virtual alloc and it is so follow and dump let's now actually just put a breakpoint on virtual allocate a breakpoint on get process uh, actually no let's put a breakpoint on virtual protect and again let's put it on load library so now what we can do is let's run we hit virtual allocate again and as you can see there's automatically mentions to this executable so let's run once more check the first reason it's still there we get virtual allocate again and this already seems to be for that's the wrong one right click fall and dump let's run once more we get virtual alloc once more time so let's continue following and dump we're now in this section here and it calls the load library for imm32.dll so now we jump to the user code again let's check the strings still only one string so it doesn't look too important so let's actually just scroll down just in case there's a call anywhere to a register or region memory by looking at it you might think that the call to ebp plus f49 could be a call to the region of memory that's unpacked but based on past experience I've never seen any calls to EVP plus F51 for example the only real calls I've ever seen to unpack code has always just been the register there's never been any adding to it there's never been any arithmetic or anything so I'm guessing an EVP there's probably some structure or something that has loads of different strings or whatever or addresses to these API calls and it just calls it by doing that rather than specifically calling the function so let's just run again we hit load library once more imm32.dll user code still the same nothing real new there and let's jump to use code can't actually follow that dump so this one didn't actually create anything in memory so run once more okay so it now actually creates it so we can start viewing some strings now 
it's quite interesting. Uh, what's that? So we can see there's now AS pack Delphi. So we get virtual allocate. So now follow and dump again. Run once more. Follow and dump once more. Okay, nothing real there happened. Follow and dump. F9. Keep doing this. Still doesn't seem to be any anything useful. No executables found. No string. Oh, actually, it's finding a lot of strings here. Okay, so this potentially we've actually unpacked the file itself. So from looking at these strings, it looks like we actually have unpacked the file. It seems to be a date, and there looks to be some form of URL there, registry keys. So maybe it was actually a dropper because it seems to be calling jpskb.exe. Here's some URLs here. So from this, we can assume that we have definitely unpacked it. So let's do the same thing as before, hit the return each time. See if we can get to the entry point. See if Scylla can get the entry point anywhere. So do the IAT auto search, get the imports, and it seems to have found quite a lot of imports here. So what we can go ahead and do is we can dump it to the desktop, save, and let's open up PBear and open up the executable. Now imports seems to be only one import here, which is quite strange. There's a lot of resources here though. Okay, section headers seem fine compared to the original executable. It looks like it has been unpacked. So what we can go ahead and do, so we do fix dump and select the dump. So it's apparently fixed it and rebuilt the import address table. So maybe opening up in PEBear will show us everything, all the imports. It definitely has added all the other stuff, so the WinINet and the URL one that wasn't there before. So what we can do is let's double check, don't save one last time. If we look at the imports, there's some issues with the imports because they're Delphi and I don't think they're recognized correctly. But there's a lot more imports in here than there was before. Once it's all loaded, it'll show us the entry point. That's the only issue with the Delphi programs is because they're such large files it takes a while to load them in but if it was actually malware I don't believe it is because what we can do is we can just run it quickly and remove the breakpoint remove that breakpoint and run it and as you can see it just seems to be some form of Excel there does seem to be stuff about travel I have no idea what it's saying but that's pretty much it, it doesn't look anything malicious although I probably wouldn't use it but yeah that pretty much brings an end to this video